In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this over here, which is a great option if you have clients who don't like to use the WordPress admin, or if you just don't want them digging around in there for whatever reason, this allows you to give shortcuts right into the admin, right to specific pages that you want. It replaces the admin toolbar that we usually have up here and also enhances it. So if we click on this icon, it opens up our little menu here, fully customizable. I'll show you how to customize all of it in this tutorial. And for example, you can click this link, go right to the dashboard. This will go to edit a new page. This will edit this current page. It detects which page builders are being used, if it's a custom post type, if it's a Gutenberg page, and it opens the correct editor for the specific page. You can go right into the customizer. You can add custom links by creating a new form, and we also have logout functionality. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of this in this sponsored tutorial. And just like I do all my sponsored tutorials, I'm just gonna show you how it works and show you the features. Then you can decide for yourself whether it's a fit for your needs, and then you can go check it out. And if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And now let's click on the dashboard link so I can show you how to start setting this up. So what we have currently installed is the WP Swift Control plugin. If I go to plugins and add new, we can find the free version by going or searching for WP Swift Control. This is the free version right here. This plugin's fairly new, so it doesn't have a lot of installs or reviews yet, but David has been creating plugins and themes for a long time. He built the WP Page Builder Framework, the Ultimate Dashboard plugin. There's a tutorial for the framework on this channel as well, and David is good at what he does, so I have no reason to think that this plugin won't be good as well. This, of course, is the free version. The version I'm gonna show you today is the pro version. It's got a couple extra bells and whistles, but check out the free version. It'll get you up and running, and if you like what you see, you can always upgrade to the pro version. So when we install the pro version and the free version, we go to settings and we have a Swift control link here. Mine says pro because we've got the pro version running. And in here is where we customize our little sidebar widgets. And the list on the left hand side are the active widgets that we see on the website. And on the right hand side are available widgets that we can add to here. And it's really just drag and drop. Want to add a new page link? There we go. So if someone clicks on this little widget, this little icon on the front end, it'll take them to the new page editor. I'll show you how that works in just a minute. And beside every one of these, there's an edit button. We click on there, we can customize four different things. We can customize the icon. We can select whatever one we want. This is using font awesome. So select an icon. We can rename this to whatever we want as well. If you want to use some kind of jargon or translate it to a different language, you can rename it here. We can make this open in a new tab once someone clicks on it. And we can define who sees this widget. So if you only want the administrators or only admin and editor, like it's currently set, just choose those two and only they will see this widget. Everybody else will see nothing at all. Click on save when you've made the changes you want. And each of those has those same options available as you can see. And I've also installed WooCommerce on this site. So we have a new product widget. You may not have this if you don't have WooCommerce installed. If you click on advanced, there's also a new pop-up because I have a pop-up builder installed. So we can easily drag and drop those in if we wanna add those. I'm not going to in this case, but I am gonna add a new custom link by clicking on this plus icon because the widgets here don't cover all the possible use cases. So we can add a custom link. I'm gonna call this new form for the icon. I'm gonna look up envelope and for the widget URL, I'm gonna to go to contact forms or contact and add new. This is contact form seven. And I'm just gonna copy the URL from up here. Close that tab, paste it in here. Open that new tab, click on save. Gonna put this above logout. I already created this one. Gonna delete this one here. There we go. So now we have our logout at the bottom. I think that's where the logout should be. And we have our accent color, which is the color, if we go back out to the main site, is the color that we see here with the blue and the arrow. So it starts off as purple when you install a plugin and you can customize it to any color you want. Change the icon color, change the background colors, hover colors, icon colors. I quite like the way they are. So I'm just gonna keep them as is. And then we can also choose to remove the arrow indicator. The arrow indicator is when this is collapsed, this little arrow right here. So you can take that away by clicking that. You can also auto expand the panel by clicking this. And you can also remove the admin bar or not. If we turn this back off, as in not have it removed for anybody, 
click on save changes and then come back out here and refresh we now have the admin bar back at the top so this is basically what we're replacing is this admin bar up here and we have this auto opened and we have the arrow gone so we're going to customize this back to how it was remove the admin bar for everybody I don't want it auto expanded I kind of like that annoying arrow click on save changes Two more important options. If you have a plugin that loads Font Awesome, like Elementor or a different page builder, or even the Font Awesome plugin itself, you can choose not to load Font Awesome for this plugin. That saves a bit on load speed. You can also choose to remove data and uninstall. I really like this option because it cleans up your database. If it turns out you don't like the plugin, if you uninstall it and this option is not selected, there may be some data left in the database in regards to this plugin. You wanna have the data removed? Choose this option. Whether you use this option or not is up to you. The big benefit of keeping data in the database is if it's a plugin you might want to use again later, you can reinstall it and have some of the configuration already done. So choose this or don't choose this. I usually do. Click on Save Changes, and now we're saved. Now if we come back out here and refresh. And if you don't like the position of the widget, you can easily click and drag and move it around. You have it on the left-hand side, anywhere from top to bottom, just drag and drop it, and it'll stay there. You have it on the right-hand side of your website. Super simple. One of the use cases I've found is if you have too many links in there, and you open it, the links will go below the fold of the website, so you can't click on them. And then having the option to drag and drop them and move them around is really valuable. And if we just leave it there and refresh, we'll see it stays right where it is. So it saves that position and that'll be where it is going forward on your site. We're collapsed again, and we have our links. Now let's see how these links actually work. So we have, currently, this page right here is an Elementor page. And what's really nice about this plugin is the edit page option changes dynamically based on the type of page you have. This page that we have here was built with Elementor. So if I click on edit page, it's gonna take me right into the Elementor editor. Pretty straightforward and pretty awesome. Let's go back to dashboard, go back to the website. So that's the edit page button when we're on an Elementor page. If I click on this link, I created a blog page as well. Here's our simple blog page about teaching donkeys tricks. It's an important skill to have. If I click on edit here, it takes us into Gutenberg, which is where I created this post. And this post is being loaded into an Elementor template but the edit page button doesn't open Elementor. It opens the builder used to create the specific page that you're on. This works for Elementor, Beaver Builder, Brizzy, I think, Gutenberg. It works for a handful of different page builders. I'm sure David is adding more. The customize link goes to the customizer. One click into the customizer. Usually this one's a bit of a pain to get to. And then when you exit out of here, it goes right back to the page you're on. And we have our new form link and it takes us right into the new form builder. So you can deep link into any page in your WordPress admin using those options. While we're back in the back end, let's go back to our settings and take a look at exporting widgets. We can use this export button so we can export all the settings we have and import them to another website for quick installation and setup. This plugin is also 100% compatible with multi-site. I'm not gonna cover that in this tutorial, but if you have a multi-site website, you can create and customize these options for all the child sites, which leads to a lot of time savings. You can import widgets, so here's the export. You can import them here. This point and click, upload from your hard drive. So that's the options we have for the settings in the back end. I encourage you to check out their website. Go to swiftcontrol.com. After you download the free version and try it out, or if you just like what you see, head to here, get some more information, go to the pricing page. You'll see that the prices are quite reasonable. This is $58 a year, not for one website, but for unlimited websites. And the lifetime option is just lifetime. All the same features go for both of those. If you wanna see the pro features, they're right down here. And here's a list of the page builders that works with right now. Elementor, Brizzy, Divi, Oxygen, Wallace Inline, and Beaver Builder. Those will automatically detect when we click on edit page. It'll auto detect those page builders and go right into the editor for that page. And it also works with custom post types. I didn't cover that in this tutorial, but if you have ACF installed, advanced custom post types, or tool set or pods, it will recognize the advanced custom post types. So if you're on an advanced custom post type page, you can click on 
edit page and it goes right into the editor for that page. So if you have clients that aren't really familiar with WordPress or they don't want to be and they get confused in there, this is a great option to look into. And if you like what you saw in this tutorial, check out David's theme, the WP Page Builder Framework. I've got a tutorial for it right here. It's a theme I currently use on my own website, wplearninglab.com. It's a great theme. It's created to work with page builders and enhance their functionality. So check out that tutorial right there. And make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't done so yet so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.